Good morning. Welcome to United Baptist Church, the Church of One, uh, One Lord and Savior. Uh, many people, <clears throat> just not all in the, the same place, and uh, but that's okay. We can come together <clears throat> in many ways, and we're here this morning to uh, dig into God's Word, to be inspired by the grace and mercy of God, and uh, hopefully uh, be reminded that you know we're not in this world alone that uh, he's on our side. He's actually interested in us specifically. He wants us to grow and progress in holiness, and uh, he wants us to be used by him in this world, to be the salt and light. And sometimes you can get lost in the busyness of life and forget about that, that we're here on mission. We've been dropped into this world, and uh, he wants us to be uh, someone that represents God and and that's the hope, right? As we dig into his word and change ourselves, that people will begin to see Christ in us and that will make a difference. And uh, so I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. And, uh, uh, you know, I look forward to returning to a normal way of life. Uh, my whole routine is all messed up. So I, I have trouble building routines. So I don't know what I'm going to do now. It's going to take a little while, but uh, but that's OK. All right. So. Uh, Uh, I guess we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to be looking at verses 9 through 13. So if you have your Bible, I encourage you to uh, to pull that out. And I'm going to read, it's from the New Living Translation. That's a translation I use just because it's, uh, I think it's very plain English, easy to hear and absorb. So Matthew 9, 9 through 13. And really, uh, before I read that, just to give you kind of a little... Uh, insight into what I'm talking about today. I've titled my sermon, uh, The Comeback Kid, and I have the scribe sheets, and hopefully you got a copy of that on uh, our Facebook site and printed that out. Uh, But the title of my sermon is The Comeback Kid, and I'm sure you've heard that term before, and and I think a lot of movies are based around this same premise that, uh, boy, we love to root for the underdog. We love to see someone who has been beaten down and is really, uh, you know, the world has counted him out, but he has a comeback and he becomes someone greater than he was before. And uh, it's an, it, it makes the best of movies. And But guess what? It makes the best of lives. It makes the best of souls, a soul that uh, even though it may be in the pits it may be in the valley it may be in some struggle or battle or even you know before uh, becoming a christian you're just steeped in sin and you have no hope but to come back from that is an exciting thing and the way we come back from that is the comeback king and i that comeback king is jesus christ he allows us to begin again and that is the the good news of the gospel that's the good news that he proclaimed Uh, you can begin again. And I hope this is a message of encouragement to you this morning that uh, you've not gone too far. You have not gone outside of God's love. Uh, He wants you to succeed in life. He wants you to be his people. He wants you uh, to grow in righteousness. And no matter how you might have failed or have been failing, you're not done yet. And, uh, And I need to hear that, and I hope you need to hear that this morning. So uh, let me read the scripture to you, and we're going to look into uh, how uh, Matthew is the comeback king here. And Matthew is the author of the book of Matthew, as you can imagine, uh, or maybe the pen that wrote down what God wanted, right? That's the the idea of inspiration. Matthew wrote the book of Matthew, uh, but God used him to... to uh, give us his truth so that we can apply it to our lives. So as we read this, this is from God for us, even for us today. So let me read that to you. Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. 
And then he added, now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. That's the scripture for today. Let me open up with a word of prayer and uh, get our hearts and minds prepared to, uh, to receive what God has for us today. And, and, uh, and I know I always need God's help in presenting the word, so hopefully this will be helpful for you. So let me pray. Lord, I'm grateful for those who are here watching live. It's an encouragement to me to know I'm, I'm not alone, Lord. And I pray for those who are uh, here listening and, and those who may be listening later on, Lord, that their hearts and minds uh, would be open and available to what you want to do in them, Lord. And uh, we know your word is living and active and it's meant to get to the core of the things that ail us. And uh, we know that sin, Lord, but we need more specifics sometimes. And so, Lord, we thank you for the insight we're going to get today, uh, the hope that we're going to get today. And I just pray, Lord, that you help me to present it uh, clearly and in a way that uh, will bless people this week. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, all right. Again, uh, grateful for you being here. Uh, let me just uh, check the clock there, just get a mental note of uh, how long I'm speaking. Uh, the story of Matthew is just such an exciting one. I don't know about you. I, I haven't forgotten where I've come from. Uh, you know, I, I was uh, living a sinful life. I didn't become a Christian until I was 20 years old. So uh, I know what it means to have a second chance. I know what it means to make an adjustment. And I know some of you that maybe were raised in the church and maybe didn't experience that. Uh, you might feel like you're missing out, but you're not missing out. I think uh, to get to that point where you're ashamed of yourself or uh, really wondering what life's about and, and you know what in the world am I going to do, uh, the fact that you have God's wisdom r early off in life because of godly parents who are teaching you, it's a good thing. You don't have to learn the hard way to appreciate Christ, and I, I hope you realize that. Um, but it's an important thing to know that uh, even if you do drift away from God, uh, that doesn't mean that you've become unclean uh, beyond repair. And I think that's what we see in the message today. Uh, you know, the story revolves around the uh, concept of tax collector, if you can imagine, right? The Romans took, you know, uh, conquered Jerusalem, and they were present in Jerusalem, and they brought with them their idols. They brought with them their authority that was not the authority of God. And, and one of the things that they would do is they would take uh, natives from the population because they needed to know the local people and their ways to avoid uh, you know, paying taxes. So they would uh, find Jews who were willing to be tax collectors and they would be paid by the Roman uh, Empire and they would do the duty of gathering taxes from the people. And as you can imagine, what comes with power comes corruption, right? Our founding fathers wrote our constitution based around the fact that uh, men are not angels, right? And therefore, we will not be governed by angels. We have to restrict the power of government because it will be misused. And uh, as you can imagine, a tax collector's power and authority of the sword of, of Rome behind them uh, could misuse their power. So they became synonymous with the lowest of the lowest sinners because, as you can imagine, more times than not, they would give in to those temptations and misuse uh, their authority for their own gain. It's like the epitome of selfishness. Um, so that is a tax collector. And here, Jesus comes upon a tax collector. And uh, how he deals with the tax collector is insightful. It's, it's uh, important for us to see, right? What does Jesus do with a, a dirty, rotten, low-down sinner? You know, does he walk around him? Does he walk over him? Uh, no, he actually stops and gives him an invitation, and, and that's the beauty of this. Even though Matthew had, you know, given in to the world's temptations, uh, the story was not done for him. And you know what? The story's not done for any sinner still living and breathing and uh, willing to see and make a change. And I think that's the beauty of it is that nobody's gone too far from God as long as you're still in this world. 
Uh, Matthew gave in to the world's temptations. And what are the world's temptations? The same things you're tempted with, right? What are the things that you want? You, you want security. You want inclusion. You want gain, right? You want to make something of yourself. You want to gain things. So the, the desire for security and inclusion and gain that can come from different sources. And uh, when we live in a, a world or a culture that's dominated by uh, those who don't share the values of God, there's going to be temptation for you to be drawn in and uh, for you to give in to that. And in the midst of that, right, you get immediate satisfaction, but uh, you know what you've done and it weighs heavy and it begins to be a burden to you and you begin to be uh, ashamed and guilty and uh, and it creates all sorts of problems. So here we have Matthew, and as you can imagine, a young Jewish boy growing up, I'm sure the number one job to aspire to was being a rabbi, being someone who you know, could be a, a learned man and study the scriptures, and who knows, maybe that was his path in, in life. Uh, he wanted to be someone honorable, and that was what his parents uh, encouraged him to do. But somehow, through a series of missteps and bad decisions, he finds himself in the most hated position in all of Israel, the tax collector. And uh, so Matthew has made a mess of his life. And uh, that's a good, important thing to see here, because one of the big questions people throughout history would want to know is that when I make a big mess of my life, when I have done the unthinkable or uh, live in a way in which, you know, my value has, you know, depreciated to a point of, of almost being worthless, the question is, is am I still worthless to God? Uh, is there anything in me, that, any glimmer of hope that uh, I could do something different, that I could be someone different? And the answer today is yes, yes. Uh, through Jesus Christ, uh, there's no need to stay in the mess that, that you've made. And that's the, the main idea that's on the scribe sheet. I, I write that in the green text because it's ultimately the, the main thing that I want you to get away from this, which is because of Jesus, there's no need to stay in the mess that you've made. There's no need to stay in the mess that you made because of Jesus. And I'm going to kind of expand on that. But uh, looking at your scribe sheet, I asked that first question, right? Wouldn't it be great if you could start over? You have to go through those motions. Maybe some people have less regrets than others. But even just the thought of, you know, all the, the things that I've learned and understood uh, through age. And you can't help but think, well, what would I have made of myself if I could go back with what I know today? Uh, so the thought of fantasizing about a, a start over, what what better life could I live? You know, wouldn't it be great if you could start over? And I think the point of that, me asking that question, is the sense that occasionally we do need to start over. Even in the, in the Christian life, right, we make uh, bad decisions and we go down bad roads and, and we have bad habits and, and uh, we might be uh, captured and become a slave to sin. And the question is, wouldn't it be nice if I could start over? And with Jesus, that's possible. We can begin again. Uh, and as I think of that term, begin again, you can't help but think about born again, right? Isn't that ultimately what we're talking about? Uh, Nicodemus didn't get it, right? He was thinking, how can I be born again? He was thinking physically. He was thinking in terms of, uh, you know, this world. But Jesus made it pretty clear, you must be born again spiritually, and I think that begin again, that spiritual rebirth is the beginning of the Christian life. Uh, the fact that you come to terms with the state that you're in and you desire to make a change and, and you aspire to make a change. And I think the good news of Jesus Christ is that, you know what, uh, he's come from the, for the poor and the lost. Uh, and that's good if you understand that you're poor and you're lost. Uh, then, hey, you're the prime candidate for who God is looking for. Um, so let me just stick to my scribe sheet, just so I don't drift too far from the left and right. But uh, the main, uh, the first point on my scribe sheet, I think, ties us into where we are here today, right? Jesus walking along, he sees a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. And because of 
his omniscience, right? He knows everything. He knows the beginning of Matthew and the end of Matthew. He knows every possible outcome for his life. Jesus looks upon this sinful tax collector, and let's face it, he has compassion on him. And I think that's a good thing. Then my first point on my scribe sheet, (coughs) my first point is that someday you may find yourself in a bad place and wonder how you got there. And, And Let's face it, that it can happen. Uh, you find yourself in a bad place and you wonder how you got there. Maybe you'll think back to, to, to some mess that you got out of before. Maybe you're in a mess right now. Maybe there's a mess yet to come. God forbid. I hope that's not in your future. But someday uh, you may find yourself in a bad place and you're going to wonder how you got there. And I can imagine Matthew sitting at the tax booth must have had some of these thoughts thinking, my goodness, I'm so hated and I'm so ashamed and uh, how did I get to this point? And uh, you know what? That's not, that's not uh, a bad thing to do, uh, to reflect on uh, the state that you're in and wonder how you got there. And, uh, and let's face it, the second point of my scribe sheet, I thought, you know, is you, you're going to look back and, and it's going to reveal a series of decisions that seemed right at the time, but they were really your undoing. And I think those two things, right, uh, are the reality. Sometimes we find ourselves in bad places and wonder how we got there. And the more we think about it, uh, we realize that there's a series of decisions that has gotten us to that point. And, uh, and I, I think a lot of times we can want to blame our circumstances. We blame others. And, right, that's the natural reaction. But uh, it's a good thing to recognize that, you know what, I made some bad decisions Uh, I responded uh, in the wrong ways to the things that were put in front of me. And uh, so that's the state that we find Matthew. And I think that's verse 9 of Matthew 9 is is, uh, Matthew is in that state. And uh, the question is, is is he going to be able to begin again? When you make a mess of your life, uh, it's good to know it and and, uh, and not to uh, lose sight of that. But wouldn't it be great if you could start over? And I think uh, that's the beauty of this. And I think here, right, one of the things that we want to understand when it comes to who Jesus is looking for, I I wrote down that Jesus is the screw-up's answer, right? The one who is a failure, the one who falls on his face, makes a mess of things. Uh, Jesus is for that person. He, He offers precisely what some long for. Uh, and he takes a broken life and he mends it before it's too late. And that, that is the good news. And, and uh, we see that. We see that in the scriptures. I think when Jesus begins to present the good news, uh, you know, who's he looking for? He's looking for the screw ups. He's looking for the ones who have messed up and are willing to admit it. Let me read you a couple of verses. This is in Luke chapter 4, uh, 18 to 19. This is uh, the scripture where he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, right? He's announcing his ministry, quoting from Isaiah. Uh, He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. You know, if I paraphrase that, Jesus came looking for the screw-ups, the ones who have messed up, the ones who are broken and lost and poor. That's who Jesus came for. Luke 7.22, this is when uh, John's disciples were uh, trying to question Jesus on, uh, you know, is this the time of of, of hope where we can uh, begin again? And Jesus tells them, he says, uh, Uh, He tells the disciples, go back and tell John, tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. Such a message of hope. And Jesus told John's disciples, go back and tell them the time has come, the time when humanity can begin again. I'm going to bring healing. I'm going to bring renewal. I'm going to bring redemption. And that's an exciting thing. So here we have Matthew uh, in, a, in a depraved state, uh, 
bemoaning his uh, state of life. And uh, so what comes next? I think, uh, I think it's a wonderful thing to think that uh, Matthew, even though he was uh, dishonorable in the sense of what he had been doing, uh, you can become honorable again. And that's the hope. And, and what do you need in order to be honorable again? I think uh, Jesus kind of uh, Jesus talks about it when he was talking about the Pharisees last week. We talked about how uh, you know the Pharisees and religious leaders got it all wrong, right? Just to even have kind of a glimpse back to last week's message. It was Jesus he- healing the paralytic, but before healing them, he says, "Hey, your sins are forgiven," and the teachers of the law recoil at the thought that somehow Jesus could have the authority to do such a thing. And and they got lost in, uh, you know, their offense. And really the the reason why was they missed the most important things of God. And and I brought you to the verse in the Matthew 23, uh, where he's talking about how they were uh, obsessing over certain laws of Moses but they were neglecting the important things. And what were those things? I hope you remember, because they're pretty significant. The, the important things were justice, mercy, and faith. Justice, mercy, and faith. And, and really, those three words uh, are all about uh, sin. They're all about the fact that God is a just judge, which means that we're in trouble, uh, but he's also merciful. And ultimately, in order to receive that mercy, we would have to turn to him and trust in him. And that's faith. Uh, The teachers of the law had got lost in their religion and missed the fact that God is a merciful God. Even though he's a holy God, he's a merciful God. And he's a God that can help you begin again. And that's an important message. It's definitely an important message for the lost and broken because they're hopeless uh, they're not self-deceived like the Pharisees. And, uh, and that's the message today, right? Because of Jesus, there's no need to stay in the mess that you've made. And what do you need in order to get out of the mess that you made? You know, I made this big old list. I was thinking in terms of like counseling and, and what are the things that I need to do in order to, you know, turn around my life. But then I finally get back to the fact that, you know, Jesus does it all in verse 9. Back to Matthew 9, verse 9. Uh, You just need two things, and both of them are given uh, from Jesus. The first thing that you need is an invitation, an invitation. All Matthew needed to know was that, you know what? It's not over for me. There's someone that sees potential in me that uh, I don't have to stay in the valley. I don't have to stay uh, in the pit and continue to, uh, you know, uh, punish myself for my past. And I think that happens a lot. People have punished themselves throughout their lives for the past mistakes that they've made. But you know what? If just someone could believe in me. And the invitation of Jesus is an affirmation that, you know what, Matthew, I see something in you. And uh, so Jesus brings that invitation. He says, follow me, follow me. And Matthew uh, not only needed an invitation, but he needed uh, he needed a new foundation for his life. And I think uh, when he says, follow me and be my disciple, Jesus is not just offering uh, an invitation. He's also offering instruction. And I think for someone who is uh, ready to make a change, Uh, and understand the value and the wisdom that can come from God, uh, it comes with instruction. It comes with a teaching so that you can be trained in righteousness, that your life can stop being what it was. Uh, So Jesus here in in verse 9 of Matthew uh, gives the two things necessary, uh, an invitation uh, and instruction. And, And you know what? I love the response that Matthew had. And I think it it speaks to the fact that he was in a state of mind ready to receive those two things because it says he got up and he followed him. It was a no-brainer at that point. He understood his life was not what he wanted it to be. Uh, He had burdens. He had mistakes. But you know what? Here's Jesus, and Jesus is inviting me to follow him. And that invitation still extends to people today. Jesus still says, follow me and be my disciple. 
And I hope if you're someone here who professes to be a Christian that you would be able to testify to just that. I responded to the invitation of God. I, I responded to the invitation of Jesus Christ and I followed him. So uh, here in Matthew, we see that, uh, that progression. Um, in that third point on your scribe sheet, as you can see, I, I need it desperately. The third point of the scribe sheet is what ails many souls is a longing to begin again. And I hope I spelled ails correctly there. I don't know. But uh, uh, what ails many souls is a longing to begin again. There are people out there today uh, who've made a mess of their lives, made a mess of their marriages, made a mess of their uh, careers. Um, who knows? Made a mess of their parenting. And, and they're in a state where they feel like failures. And the question is, you know, wouldn't it be nice to start over? Wouldn't it be nice to begin again? Uh, a soul uh, that is ailing longs to begin again. And you know what? And that's a good thing because Jesus is giving that invite and instruction uh, so that you can begin again because you have to have that. You have to have some other direction. Well, where do I go from here? Um, the fourth point on the scribe sheet is that Jesus is looking for regretless failures like you. <laughs> I hope I'm, that's not offensive to you, but uh, the fourth point is Jesus is looking for regretful failures like you. Does it make you uh, upset if I call you a failure? Um, maybe it does. But when it comes to uh, holiness and a pursuit of righteousness, we're going to fall flat on our faces. We're not going to succeed all the time, right? We're going to have failures. And until you get comfortable with that concept, you're going to stop trying to hide your failures from others. You're going to stop trying to hide your failures from God. And you're going to want to do what any, you know, uh, clear-minded person wants to do, which is I need to begin again. I need to start over. And uh, you know what? Jesus gives that uh, that declaration to follow me and be my disciple. And it's an invitation that continues throughout the life of a Christian. Uh, every time I fall flat on my face and I fail, I know that Jesus is there once again saying, you know what, follow me, be my disciple. And I receive that. And I think uh, one of the ways in which we can begin that path again, and I know Matthew's going to discover it, is the reason why Jesus can make that invitation is because he's provided a way for cleansing to occur. And I think that's the, the point of, of what uh, Jesus was getting after with these teachers of the law. They were so focused on, you know, polishing their tombs that they forgot to realize that there was uh, uncleanness within. Jesus is able to cleanse the broken soul, the, the one who is steeped in sin and failure and regret. Jesus can cleanse that. Jesus can give you the ability to begin again. Uh, why don't you turn to Matthew chapter 23. Uh, I, didn't, I don't know if I read this last week, but uh, they're important verses because here Jesus is laying in heavy on the teachers of the law. And we you know, talked about pride and, and people who are religious and want to look good to others. Uh, really, that's not what God is looking for. God is looking for an honest soul, a soul that acknowledges that, uh, you know what, I'm full of, of sin that I need cleansing from. Let's look at uh, Matthew 23, verse 25. It says, What sorrow awaits you teachers of religious law and you Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy, full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first wash the inside of the cup and the dish, and then the outside will become clean too. And then verse 28 says, Outwardly you look like righteous people, but inwardly your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. So here Jesus is setting the stage uh, for anyone listening to say, you know what, if you're going to come to me, you need to come to me in humility and in truth with the realization that the inside needs to be cleansed. And who's going to receive that cleansing? It's not going to be the one who stands proud uh, in denial of the failures and, and the, the missteps people have made in their lives, but those who understand that they're poor and that they're broken and that they're lost. Uh, this, one of my favorite uh, scriptures to look at is, uh, is the scripture of the tax collector and the, 
uh, Pharisee, and this is in Luke chapter 23. Why don't we turn to that? Luke 23 speaks to this point. Uh, Luke 23, and uh, I would like to, uh, or excuse me, Luke 19. Luke Well, I think I might have uh, mistaken. It's Luke 18. Sorry about that. Uh, Luke 18. Luke 18 uh, verses 9 through 14 is that beautiful parable. And it's a parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Um, It says, Jesus told this story to some who had great confidence in their own righteousness and scorned everyone else. Two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a despised tax collector. Hmm. This sure sounds like the story of Matthew, right? Uh, uh, And then it says, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not a, a sinner like everyone else, for I don't cheat, I don't sin, and I don't commit adultery. I'm certainly not like that tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give you a tenth of my income. But the tax collector stood at a distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, O God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted." Those are the words of Jesus, and those are the words of Jesus that still ring true today. If you exalt yourself, if you hide your sin and you hide your depravity, you cannot be healed by God. And I think as we look into this verse, going back to Matthew chapter 9, uh, we see the development here as Jesus uh, in, sees potential and and wants to invest in the life of Matthew. Matthew instantly responds, and I love what we see in Matthew uh, 9, 10. Uh, He invites Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. So, you know, people who are steeped in sin tend to want to be around other people steeped in sin. It's less convicting and uh, less judgmental. And uh, here, Matthew, having been uh, given a chance to begin again, wants to share his great fortune and his treasure that he's found in Jesus, the mercy he's found in Jesus, and wants to uh, introduce Jesus and the disciples to the people who whom he knows and I think that's a a wonderful thing that Matthew didn't want to just change and begin to uh, see himself as better than others but remembered where he came from and wasn't ashamed uh, to to have Jesus be in the midst of those people with him because those were his friends those were the people that that he was around and he wanted them to see that they had hope too I can only imagine <clears throat> but look as, as the scripture progresses. The Pharisees saw this and they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? Right? What, a, what a profound statement to make there. The Pharisees, the religious ones, the ones who saw themselves uh, as, as being the keepers of the law and being the ones who had it all together, they were offended at Jesus' inclusion of the broken and downtrodden. And it says that Jesus heard this and he said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. And here we see that uh, principle that Jesus came for sinners. He didn't come from those who didn't think they were sinners. And uh, looking back on my scribe sheet, uh, that fourth point that I mentioned, Jesus is looking for regretful failures like you. He's looking for those who are going to be honest with the things that they struggle with, to be honest about uh, that their lives have not uh, fulfilled uh, you know, the, what God would want for them. And I think the fifth point on my scribe sheet I'd like to get to is God's mercy begins with knowing you're still valued and not done yet. And I think this is the good news that Jesus brings is that, that we are still valued and that we're not uh, finished yet. If you're in a position where maybe you've made a mess of your life, uh, to know the forgiveness of God, to know the invitation and instruction he still offers to you means that you can begin again. 
And uh, I think that's an important thing. And so because of Jesus, there's no need to stay in the mess that you've made. And I think a lot of uh, the, the folks who are suffering today think that they have to stay there, that because they have made that bed, now they have to lie in it, right? And, and that is the, the thought that I have to get what I deserve. But through Jesus Christ, we can get what we don't deserve. And that is uh, mercy. That is uh, uh, a chance uh, to begin again. And that, that is the, the concept of the comeback king. And I think the reason why that is possible is that uh, Jesus, because he had every right to condemn us, he had every right to judge us and to destroy us, but he didn't. Instead, he put aside uh, his own uh, requirement of holiness and, and purity for us. And I think 2 Corinthians speaks to that uh, mercy of God that is such a treasure. Um, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, let me read it to you. Um, it says that, uh, you know, the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor so that by his poverty, he, he could be, make you rich. Let me read that again. Because, you know, this concept of Jesus allowing you to begin again, it required something of God, a sacrifice from God, in order to make that possible. Um, so 2 Corinthians 8, 9, it says, You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, uh, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. You can begin again because Jesus Christ set aside his holiness, set aside his perfection, and he took upon himself your sin. He took upon himself your failures, the failures that Matthew had made, the, mis the bad decisions, uh, the mess that he had made of his life. Jesus says, you know what? Uh, you can begin again because whatever it is that you deserve from God, I'm going to take upon myself. I will bear your sin so that you can start again. Uh, and that is the good news, that God is for the broken and the lost, and he allowed himself to be broken in our place so that we could be made whole. And man, isn't that good news? Uh, so I hope that's an, an encouragement to you today. I did want to just mention my last uh, point. The last point is don't run or hide from your failures, but own them. Don't run uh, and hide from the mistakes and the failures, failures that you've made. It's okay to say that you were wrong, that you've made mistakes, you've made uh, bad decisions, um, because God's mercy can make you new. You can stand tall and proud that, you know what, because of Jesus Christ, I don't have to stay in this mess that I've made of myself. Uh, verse 13, back in Matthew, uh, he, he quotes a verse in Hosea that talks about how uh, you know, the life of someone that knows God should be revolving around this celebration of mercy, not always be looking to try to bring something to God, uh, but to just receive and enjoy what God has offered us. So when he quotes that, that scripture, it says, Now go and learn the meaning of this. I, I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. I want you to show mercy, not offer offer sacrifice for I have come to call not those who think they are righteous but those who know they are sinners those who know they are sinners have more hope than those who think they are righteous which do you think you are today are you someone that needs to begin again and I just want to let you know once again that Jesus says you know what follow me and be my disciples you can begin again uh, enjoy the mercy of God. Enjoy it by allowing him to pay the penalty for your sin. That is what it means to be redeemed, uh, to turn from your sin and turn to Jesus Christ as the answer. And I hope uh, this was an encouragement to you. I hope you have a desire to share this message to others. I think in the same way that Matthew wanted to invite Jesus and his disciples into his home and he invited all his depraved friends, he did it for a reason. Because if there was hope for me, then there's hope for you. And there's hope for the, those who think uh, their lives are, are never going to turn around. And I think we should have that same compassion on the ones uh, that we know that we don't begin to try to act religious uh, and righteous, but that we remember where we came from and we remember where God has brought us. And that invitation goes out 
still today to those willing to respond and follow him. Let me close in a word of prayer. Thanks again for being here today. And uh, I look forward to church coming back to normal. And, and we'll pray that this uh, will come soon and uh, that, that our government, um, even our governor, will have the wisdom to know when the right time is for that. So uh, let me close in a word of prayer. Lord, uh, it's an exciting thing to know that, uh, that I don't have to stay in the mess that I'm in, that be, because of your mercy, Lord, that uh, I don't have to be ashamed forever. I can be ashamed and mourn my sin and, 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 and feel badly and, and want uh, to be punished, but to realize, Lord, that you've taken the punishment that I deserve and, and for me to accept and appreciate that is the first step out of the mess. So, Lord, I pray for anyone here today who is in a mess, ready to take that step. But, Lord, I pray that they hear your voice, they hear your invitation uh, to not continue in that, to not settle for that, but to want to, to uh, aspire and, and rise from the ashes, Lord. You allow that because of your power, because of your uh, wisdom, Lord, and because of your mercy. So we thank you today that we could be reminded of that in the life of Matthew. And Lord, that we would have compassion on uh, those who continue to suffer, those who would not argue that they are sinners, but they would accept, uh, accept that fact, Lord. They're the ones who are primed and ready, Lord. Help us to draw close to them, to share the good news. And Lord, we thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that time goes by quick, and, uh, but I'm glad you joined me this morning, and I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you again. So take care.